field. Let's start at the quarterback tight end position. The golds that we have. If you were going to give out gold medals. Yeah. For the players we have listed on the screen, I'm going to list them for people that are listening to the audio product. For quarterbacks, we got Patrick Mahomes at four, Anthony Richardson, C.J. Stroud, and Joe Burrow comes in as quarterback seven. Yep. The tight ends, at four, you got Trey McBride, five, Evan Ingram, six, George Kittle, and seven is Dalton Kincaid. So give me your quarterback and tight end gold medal winners for this. Yeah, season. so I've been thinking about this. With Anthony Richardson, obviously, I've been talking about him so much during yeah. the preseason. I don't want to just like simply spend all my time talking about him. Great options there with Patrick Mahomes, C.J. Stroud, and Joe Burrow. So I'm going to go with Anthony Richardson. Okay. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> you don't come this far to only come you this gotta far, right? you got to plant your flag sometimes, Yeah, field. you got to plant your flag. I'm going to go down with this one or hopefully ride uh, into a blaze of glory uh, with Anthony Richardson. Uh, played over the weekend, two for four, uh, had just one rushing attempt as well. I, that, that's one where, I don't know, two series, not going to read too much into it one way or the other. Uh, but, yeah, no, I, I just, again, there is the potential – for a special fantasy football season. 15th in quarterback rushing points last year. 15th. He played 12 quarters. Wow. He f- started and finished two games last season. Quarterback four and quarterback two. I think it'll get prettier as a passer this year for Anthony Richardson. But what I think is so compelling about him as a player is even if it doesn't, he can still be a fantasy football nightmare for opponents. So Anthony Richardson is my gold and the gold tight end is Trey McBride. Ooh. Cardinals wide uh, tight end, of course, uh, who I just feel really, really good about. If you look at him down the stretch last season, he was, he was ridiculous. So in his final 10 games, when he became sort of a full-time player and a starter, remember Zach Gertz obviously was with the team uh, at the beginning of last season, eventually released, signed with your Lions for yes, the NFC Championship minute. game, right? Yep. Uh, how about this? Eight and a half targets per game, 6.6 receptions per game. 15 fantasy points per game, and he was first amongst tight ends in targets per route run. So basically, if you take all of his targets, or take all of his routes run, he was the guy that was most frequently targeted. Yeah, uh, He wasn't running as many routes over the course of the season as others who are full-time starters from week one all the way through week 18. I think the talent is legit. He was the highest tight end taken, uh, second highest tight end taken two years ago, Daniel. No, he was highest, I'm sorry. Highest tight end taken two years ago. He won the Mackey Award, which is given out to the best college football tight end. Yep. This guy is a really, really special football player. And as you guys know, I'm optimistic on this Arizona offense. So those are my picks. Anthony Richardson and Trey McBride, congratulations to you. Yeah, it's tough to argue with either one of those. And there's a lot of reasons to like both of them, obviously, if you're talking about it. I decided to go with Patrick Mahomes in spite of the fact that he was quarterback 12 last year. But it felt like that was his floor. Didn't uh. it? Like, you're like, this is as bad as it's going to get for Patrick Mahomes in fantasy football. Yeah. Uh, fifth in attempts, but 31st in air yards per attempt. Everything that he did, I mean, it's it, and it's been coming down, right? His air yards per attempt. I, I was thinking about this when I was looking at his stats uh, last night. It's the idea of the way that defenses have just done different things with Mahomes. They're not allowing him, you know, that, that deep two safeties. You're not allowing guys to be able to get as deep as you used to when it was Tyreek Hill there. So seventh in passing yards, eighth in passing touchdowns. But here's one thing that did really surprise me last year, and it was very positive. Most rushing attempts of his career. Really? 75 rushing attempts was the most he had ever had in his career. He's had at least 300 rushing yards in four consecutive seasons. That's a great, a great floor for a guy that throws the ball as much as he does as well. It certainly helps. Yeah, um, you're right. That floor of of QB12 is pretty frightening. It really was. How bad it felt last year in fantasy. He has had 39 or more touchdowns in four of his six seasons. He has a really high floor when you talk about touchdowns last year. He only had 27. That was the fewest of his career. Again, I think that's part of the floor. He's got more people in this offense. Hopefully, Hollywood Brown is healthy once we get full time to the regular season. But they've added more people. So I like Patrick Mahomes being able to rebound and look a lot better this year than he did last year. Valid points there. How about your tight end goal? At the tight end spot, you got to go with, I, for me, I wanted to go with a dark horse candidate here, and I want to go with Dalton Kincaid. Uh, last year, Dalton Kincaid saw six or more targets in 10 of his 16 games, yep. okay? When seen at least six targets, he averaged 12.9 fantasy points per game. That would have been tight end six at the end of the season. You think about now, okay, not only did he have those targets in that offense, but now 240 additional targets have opened up with Stephon Diggs and Gabe Davis being gone. I get Sam, uh, Curtis Samuel is there. I understand the up and coming Khalil Shakir, and I get that they drafted a, a young guy in Keon Coleman, but I still think that Dalton Kincaid 
could lead this team in targets at the end of the season. That would not surprise me at all. Too much Kyle Pitts in his game, though, Fields. Only two receiving touchdowns. We got to change that. But when I look at him, I just feel like Dalton Kincaid, especially with those 240 targets that just opened up in this offense after everything he did as a rookie, he's set to be a top, a potential top five, if not higher, tight end this year. Let me ask you something, and I'm not going to weigh in with my opinion until I hear yours first. There are some who believe that the stats, the splits last year, mm-hmm. with Dalton Kincaid and Dawson Knox in the lineup, are alarming. Uh, when Dawson Knox, remember he broke his hand last season and missed a big chunk in the middle of it? Yep. So early in the year, Dalton Kincaid wasn't playing that much, both because of Knox and being a rookie. Then he takes off with Knox back in or out of the lineup, and then when Knox returns, he kind of slows down. Concerning or not concerning to you? Not concerning enough. And I realize the reason why, I get it, but to me, when I see what this kid did, it's like the eye test. Like, when I understand what he did out there on the field yeah. and the investment that I made in him, and by the way, the fact that the pass catchers we have coming in, I don't know Keon Coleman. Like, I, I don't know, and I don't want to say that he can't be, but, like, he's not a trusted pass catcher yet within this offense. He's got to earn that reputation. Same with Curtis Samuel. Yeah. And I'm not sure that Khalil Shakir has done enough in this offense to be like, this guy is the guy that Josh Allen is going to lock on to. Maybe that could be Dawson Knox again this year. But if I'm projecting, it's the idea that I've seen this skill set. Dalton Kincaid looks like the real deal. So, for me, I'm all in.